Hello, welcome to this tutorials on programming computational fluid dynamics. So today we'll be looking at higher order methods and why are they required. Then we'll be using limiters and trying to overcome the limitations of higher, higher order methods. Then we'll be looking at total variation diminishing and their relation with uh, limiters. And then we'll finally be looking at uh, some of the well-known limiters from literature. So, uh, we have seen that first order methods give highly diffused solutions. Here I have used number of cells as 100. It gives, gives highly diffused solution. However, it is at least pretty much well behaved. On the other hand, higher order methods like for example in this case, it's very, very, very bad solution, <coughs> truly speaking, full of oscillations and these oscillations are obviously not something which is acceptable. As a matter of fact, even such oscillations are not acceptable as a part of solution. So the uh, obvious question that arises is, are higher order methods really required? Why not just increase the number of cells in a first order method such that uh, instead of using 100 cells, we can use say 1000 cells or 10,000 cells and get a very accurate solution as we have seen already that as we increase this number of cells, we get less diffused solutions and more accurate solutions. So why not take that approach? So uh, that's the question that we would like to answer today. And also how to overcome this oscillations which arise in the solution. So that was one thing in case of a discontinuity. But what happens in case of a uh, in case of a smooth solution? Like for example, this is a smooth sine wave which we initiate our domain with, and then we try to advert this sine wave and see how does the solution behave as time progresses. So we can see here in case of first order method that the solution is totally diffused and almost unusable. You can see the amount of error, the amount of deviation from the exact solution that this solution. Uh, achieves. So instead of this, if we use higher order methods in case of smooth regions, we get very very accurate solution. You can see here that even after a time of 20 seconds, these higher order methods exactly, almost exactly retain the sine wave and uh, it, the diffusion is almost negligible. So this is one of the properties which we would like to use in uh, in case of uh, higher order. In, in fact, in this case, just second order method. So if we plot the order of accuracy, uh, if we plot actually the error versus the number of cells, uh, actually may not be, it, this may not be visible. Here it is log of n, n stands for the number of cells and this is log of uh, L1 error, that is L1 norm of error. Uh, so I have plotted L1 norm of error, I mean the log of L1 norm of error versus log of the number of cells in the domain. And if you, uh, as expected, as the, uh, as the number of cells are increased, the error drops. However, for a first order method, the uh, slope of on this curve that is uh, log of error versus uh, log of cells the slope is equal to 1 however in case of uh, the second order method this slope is equal to 2 that is what is expected from a second order solution uh, second order method so we can easily see here that the error quickly drops uh, for any given mesh uh, with a uh, higher order method compared to a lower order method that is one huge advantage of higher order method. So with a lesser mesh, uh, with a lesser number of uh, cells in the mesh, we can get an expected accuracy. So that is obviously a plus point. Also the rate at which the uh, error drops as we refine the mesh is also really high as the order of, uh, order of accuracy of the method increases. To emphasize the point even further, let us extrapolate this first order line and check out how many number of refinements will be required to achieve the error which is achieved by just the first mesh uh, by using from method. So what I have done here is I have just extrapolated this line and I have uh, 
I have tried. I have tried to find out at how many refinements will I achieve this error using a first order method. So every time the refinement is done, uh, well, this point here, this points here, uh, refer to for uh, of mesh size of 40 cells. This points uh, refer to uh, cells of 80. This points are for cells of 160 I mean cells equal to 160 this ones are for 320 so going uh, by that we will have to we double the number of cells every time so we'll have to do three more refinements to reach here so every time we refine the mesh the amount of computation that has to be done goes up by four so we have to do four times the amount of computation required by the mesh just before that this happens because we have taken delta we have uh, divided delta x by 2 so that calls for double amount of uh, computation also the time step gets reduced by 2 because delta x is reduced by 2 and therefore we have to take double amount of time steps to reach the same stopping time and therefore the computation which is involved will grow by 4 so if we require six refinements to reach that error, uh, we will uh, be using uh, four raised to six times the amount of time that is required by uh, this computation here. So, if we assume that we require 0 0.25 seconds to this do this computation, that means that to achieve the same error of second order method we will be needing 1024 seconds which is almost equal to 17 minutes so you can imagine the amount of extra computational time that we will require to get the same accuracy accuracy of a second order method so uh, let us say that this method uh, might i don't know maybe it will take a slightly more time than uh, than 0 0.25 seconds so let us uh, assume that it takes say uh, 5 seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds doesn't matter still it is much much lower than 17 minutes so obviously there is a huge computational uh, time benefit that we achieve by using higher order methods or in this case second order method so you can imagine uh, going to even higher order method will uh, get us uh, I mean, will give us a even higher computational efficiency also instead of using 40 mesh uh, mesh points uh, that is 40 cells we are now using 64 times more mesh cells to achieve the same accuracy so 64 times 40 gives me let me do that calculation so it gives me 2560 cells so 2560 cells have to be required and hence the memory required for allocation of these variables also grows exponentially as we do mesh refinements to get the same accuracy so obviously we see a, a real advantage and real incentive in uh, going to higher order methods compared to uh, doing the same computation with a lower order method so i i assume that this is clear as to why we need to go to higher order methods uh, however as we saw that in case of this sudden changes there are these oscillations which come up and we have to get rid of these oscillations so that is where this limiters come in so what do these limiters do is they use the first order method and they use the second order method and they combine them by using this quantity called phi this phi here is called the limiter so i'll talk about it now so if we do a re reconstruction using the first order method we just take the average value if we do it by using a second order method then we take the average value and then we uh, take the derivative at the centroid and we multiply it by the distance of x from the centroid that gives us the recon reconstruction for a second order method so we just combine these two methods to get a uh, higher order method uh, just by uh, uh, adding uh, I mean adding the first order method to the difference between the second order method and the first order method and multiplying it by 
this parameter called phi. So we can clearly see that if phi is equal to 0, that means this whole term vanishes and we are left with first order method. If phi is equal to 1, then uh, this term here and this term here will get cancelled and we will be left out with a second order reconstruction. So if we simplify this by substituting these two equations in this equation, we will end up with this equation which is simply uh, the average value at the uh, at that cell multiplied by the limiter parameter uh, multiplied by derivative uh, and uh, the distance between the centroid and the x at which we are trying to calculate the value. So this is the uh, final function which we will be using in our code. Okay, so we have introduced a parameter called r in uh, this uh, definition of phi. So r is basically the ratio of the change which is happening uh, between the cells, between the neighboring cells. So if you look at this, uh, the average value at i minus the average value at i minus 1 divided by the average value at i plus 1 minus the uh, average value at i. So this is basically a ratio of the uh, surrounding cells, uh, I mean average of the values of the surrounding cells and r by definition can uh, never be smaller than 0. Therefore, if this value turns out to be negative, then we take 0. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about why should it not be uh, less than 0 in a minute. So, uh, let us talk about another concept called total variation diminishing. So, uh, the variation is defined as the change of this value, the variable, uh, um, I mean the average of the variable i minus i minus 1. Total variation is simply the summation of all these values over the complete domain and the total variation dim diminishing is defined as uh, the total variation at level n plus 1 should be less than or equal to the total variation at time level n. What it means is that the total variation should not grow in time whereas total variation is simply the change which is happening between neighboring cells and if you sum it up for the full domain then we get the total variation. So now let us combine total variation diminishing to the uh, limiters. So we have defined this quantity called r and we have defined this quantity called the limiter that is phi of r. Now it has been seen that for getting this, getting rid of this oscillations or getting a so called monotonicity preserving solution, we have to make sure that the solution is TVD and it, it can be theoretically proven that this blue area here on a phi r plot is the area which will be uh, total variation diminution. So, there are various limiters which uh, which lie within this blue region. So, let me quickly talk about this plot uh, so that it will be clear. So, first of all, this R as we saw is the ratio of the neighboring points. Uh, so, we have no control over it. So, this is decided by the solution itself. So, given a value of R, what should be ideal value of phi? such that our solution will not be oscillatory. That is the question we would like to answer. And the answer is that it should be lying within this blue region. Okay. So I will not be going into the theory of why this uh, blue region is non-oscillatory or why is this blue region TVD and so on. Uh, I think you can go over it from any of standard CFD books. They talk about this in much more detail. So I will not be talking about that. However, I will talk about a few points in this plot. First of all, this particular point, which is an important point here. Uh, you can see that this, uh, all the uh, functions, that is the limiter functions have to pass through this point. So let us talk about this point. So here, 
r is equal to 1 which means that the difference between the backward uh, side change to the forward side change is the same therefore this difference is same as this difference and therefore r is equal to 1 so for such a point what does it mean is that we are having a straight line either in the forward i mean either with a positive slope or with a negative slope so um, if i have three values u i u i minus one and u i plus one then the difference on the back side is same as the difference on the forward side that means that these three points are lying on a straight line so such a such a distribution is a very smooth solution and therefore we should use a uh, second order method that is same as setting phi is equal to 1. Well, there is one more important point here that is when r is equal to 0. So, when r is equal to 0, it means that in fact when r is equal to 0 or when r is negative, it means that there is either a and when there is an extrema that is uh, it is either uh, i mean on one side of this uh, one side of this point the value is dropping and on the other side it is uh, dropping on the other side so it's like a hill or a valley in case of r being negative i think you can think over it a little bit you will you will understand this so from this function you can easily see that if r is negative it means that there is either a hill or a valley in the solution and therefore anything in that region or when r is equal to 0 have to go to first order so that is what is happening so if phi is 0 then it goes to a first order so that is what this plot says and any uh, any limiter which uh, any limiting function which lies in this region will be uh, giving us a non oscillator solution uh, well this is a very very brief uh, introduction to this limiters and tvd you should certainly go through books for a much detailed uh, description of what does this actually mean and how is this region actually uh, derived i mean how do we derive this uh, i mean how do we say that this region is non oscillatory that's a very interesting topic and you must go through it uh, in much more detail uh, then there are some very well known uh, limiters which um, pass through this this region uh, so some of the famous ones are min mode limiter super b limiter van leer limiter and van albada limiter in our codes we'll be using this van albada limiters so there are many more limiters which are given in this wikipedia page uh, on flux limiters so if you go if you just browse down you will see that they have also plotted this limiters on uh, over that region of acceptable um, limits so you can always see this so the one which i'll be implementing is this one van albada limiter which is a smoothly changing limiter and we will look at the results uh, pretty soon okay then i'll see you in the next video so i hope you guys are enjoying this video series and if you uh, would like to ask any extra questions any other questions please do leave a comment and well so see you guys soon bye bye